Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to create a quote form using Divi's contact form module. Now the latest updates allow us to do quite a few things like conditional logic and so on. So in this tutorial, we'll be showcasing those new features which were added in the contact form module. So without wasting a lot of time, let me show you how to create this. Before we begin, we need to make sure that you're running the latest Divi install because the latest update to the contact form module has all the features that we're going to be using throughout this tutorial. Secondly, we're going to be using some CSS. So if you'd like to follow along, I'll link the post in the show notes below. Okay, so in order for us to create our quote form, you can add this module on any page or even a brand new page. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and click on add new. I'm going to title this quote and I'm going to click on use the div builder. So first of all, let's add a full width header. So let's go into our visual builder. Okay, so we're going to start off by adding a full width header. So I'm going to come over here and add a new section and we're going to make it full width. And then here we can get the option to add our full width header. So let's start by adding our title. So I'm going to add my title and my title is going to be quote form. You can also add a subheading if you want to. So I'm just going to add my placeholder text. For our button text one, I'm just going to add show me. So let's come over here to links. So the link for button one is going to be a hash quote. Now the reason why we have this is because we're going to be add, adding an anchor to this, which will anchor to our form below. The image that we're going to use is from unsplash.com and this is right here. So if you'd like to follow along, this is a great resource for images for your websites because they are royalty free. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come to background and let's add our background image. So I'm going to click this plus button here and I'm going to click upload files, select files. My image is on the desktop, so I'm just going to double click on it. Now the right dimensions for this image is 1920 by 1080. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead now and click upload. And now we can see that our image is in the background. Next, let's add some styling to this text. So I'm gonna come over here to the design tab and uh, we want to make sure that this is centered. So instead of me looking for it over here, I'm just going to start type typing it because I know exactly what I wanna do. So you can see it comes up here as text and logo orientation. So let's center that. Okay, so you want to make this full screen. So I'm just going to search for full and then you can see straight away it comes up. So I'm going to make that full screen. So we want to make sure that show scroll down button is set to yes. So I'm just going to search for show and we can see the option here show scroll down button. So I'm going to set it to yes. So we need to choose the icon for this. So I'm just going to search for icon. And we're going to go with this icon and finally we need to add the color. So I'm just going to paste my color in here so you can see it right here at the bottom. So next we need to make sure our text color is set to light. So I'm just going to search for text and then here on the text color you can see it's set to dark. We need to set it to light. Next we need to set the title font to Ubuntu. So I'm just going to search for title. And then here on title font we're just going to search for Ubuntu and it's right here at the bottom. The size needs to be 36. Okay, so let's go to the subhead. So again, over here, the size needs to be 22. And we need to make sure that the font is also set to Ubuntu. So next, we need to add a color to our button here. So let's come over here to button one and let's select yes for use custom styles for button one. Now we have the opportunity to go in and make different changes. So first off, you know, the text size needs to be 20 and then the text color needs to be set to white. And then let's come over here to the bottom background color and paste this orange. And over here on the border, we're going to add the same color. So for consistency, we need to make sure that the uh, button font is set to Ubuntu and it is also one on the letter spacing. So with all that in place, it's now time to save our settings for now. So over here, we can see we started off with a section. So let's go ahead and delete that because it's not part of our design. Now it's time to build our quote form. So let me come over here and add a new section. So I'm going to click this plus button and this section needs to be regular. And we also need a single row. 
So next we need to add our contact form module. So I'm gonna click this plus button here and I'm just gonna search for it. And here we are. So for the title, I'm gonna start off with some dummy text. And then for the submit button text, I'm gonna say get quote. Over here, you can add a success message and uh, this can be whatever you want. So for now, I'm just gonna say thank you. We'll be in touch soon. So let's come over here to the email. So on the email, this is where you enter your email address because once the form is filled in, it needs to go somewhere. So make sure that you add your email address here. So I'm just gonna add mine. And then let's go to the redirect. So you can choose what uh, what you'd like to happen once someone has entered or filled in the form. So here you can add a redirect uh, URL. This is quite important because you can add even more information after the person has entered that information. So I'm just gonna add a blank link for now. Now it's time to go into the design tab. So for the title text, let's make sure that this is set to Ubuntu just to continue with our consistency. So on the letter spacing, I'm going to make sure this is set to one pixel. And let's bump up the size to about 30, like that. Next, let's come over here to the form field text. So over here on form field font size, let's set that to 24. And over here on the form field text color, I'm just gonna paste my color in here, like that. And we need to set the font to Ubuntu as well. Okay, let's come over here to border. We are gonna use a border and let's set our border radius to five. And I'm gonna paste my border color in here. So this is looking good so far. Let's come over here to the button and let's stylize the button too. So in order for us to do that, we need to activate the use custom styles for button. Set that to yes. So the button text size needs to be set to 24. Okay, let's add our background color. I'm gonna paste my color in here. And also here for the border width, let's set that to one pixel and apply the same color as the background color of the button. So our button text color here, we can see it hasn't been applied. So I'm just gonna do that one more time. Okay, so now that's set to white. That's good. The button letter spacing, let's set that to one pixel. And the button font needs to be Ubuntu. So what we're gonna do next is to stylize this capture area. So let's come over here to the advanced and we're gonna click on custom CSS. And we're gonna search for capture field and paste our CSS code in here. Go to the capture text and also add this code. So you can see now this is bigger and also it's looking consistent with our form. Now it's time to add our form field. So I'm gonna save this for now. So by default, our form comes with name, email, and message. So for our example today, we're not gonna use the message, so you can just click this bin icon and delete that. Okay, so now we just got name and email address. So in order for us to add our fields, just click this plus button here. So in the field ID, I'm gonna add company, because that's the next item we need. And in the title, I'm just gonna paste my uh, the contents of my title, and the title is, what is the name of your company? Okay, so let's come over here to field options and make sure that it's set to required. So I'm gonna save this for now. So now I'm gonna add my next field and it's gonna be called service. And I'm gonna paste my title in here, field options. So this time for our input field, I'm gonna choose radio buttons. So now we have the opportunity to add our items for the radio button. So I'm gonna start off by adding uh, web Production is our first one. Click this plus button to add the next one. This one is gonna be app development. Add another one, art direction. And finally, we're gonna add video creation. Okay, make sure that the um, required field is set to yes, because ideally we want people to select one of these in order for us to continue. Okay, now it's time to add the next field. So, I'm gonna come over here to field ID, and this is gonna be the art purpose. We're gonna add our question here for the title. And the question is, what kind of art direction do you need? Now, as before, we're gonna come over here to field options and choose radio buttons. And then we're gonna add our first item here as graphic design, click the plus button to add. Our next one is advertising. 
Next one is branding. And finally, we have packaging. Now, required field is good that it's set to yes. Next, we are going to add conditional logic. So I'm going to come over here to conditional logic, click on enable. On the relation, you can leave it as any. And then over here, how can we help today is equal to us direction. Okay, so let me explain what this rule does. This logic shows a field whenever the user selects our direction from the previous question. Okay, let's add another field. So we're going to go back, click my plus button here. I'm going to add my field ID. I'm going to add my title. And we can also choose radio buttons. So my first item is e-commerce blog web app and landing page and then over here on the conditional logic let's click enable any is fine so here how can we help today needs to be equal to needs to be equal to website production this logic shows this field whenever a user selects web production from the previous question Next, let's add another item. So we're going to come back here, click on this plus button, click on text. I'm going to paste my title here. The field ID is video. Click on field options. So on the input field, we're going to use our radio buttons as well. So I'm going to paste my first item. The next item is tablet, monitor or TV, and finally projector. Let's come over here to our conditional logic, make sure that we enable, we enable it. And then over here on the rules, how can we help today needs to be equal to video creation. So let's go back to our contact form settings. So this logic shows this field whenever a user selects video creation from the previous question. Okay, so let's move on to the next item, which is the app platform. So we're gonna click this plus button here and add and add app platform as our field ID and then for our title we're going to have this as our title coming over here to our form fields again this is a radio button so we're going to start off with iOS Android Windows and finally we're going to add Blackberry now I know Blackberry is not as popular but for the sake of this tutorial we might as well just add it anyways okay come over here to conditional logic let's enable it on how can we help today we need to set that up as app development okay looking good let's go back so this logic shows this field whenever a user selects app development from the previous question now it's time to add the budget field. So we're going to click this plus button, come over here to text in the field ID. We're going to add a budget and then we're going to ask them if they have a budget in place. Come over here to the form fields. We're going to select radio buttons and add our first amount. This one is going to be around 5K. And finally, greater than 10K. So this time in the required field, let's set that to no, because if they don't need to respond to this, that's fine. So we won't force them into giving us that information. So let's come over here to our conditional logic. Let's enable it with our relation set to any. So how can we help today needs to be equal to app development. Add another one. How can we help today? This one set to video production or video creation. Set another one. How can we help today? Website production. And then let's add our final one. How can we help today? Equal to art direction. Okay, so that's looking good. Let's go back. So you can see our form now is really taking shape. So we've done all the settings that we needed on this on this contact form settings. So let's go ahead and save this. Now it's time to add our anchor CSS ID. So I'm going to come over here to our section settings. Click on the advanced tab. CSS ID and classes. And we're going to paste our CSS ID right here. And our CSS ID is quote. 
I'm going to save this for now. So we can see that this um, form is taking quite a bit of space. It's time now to set up the custom width. So we're going to come over here to the row settings, click on design, sizing, use custom width, and we're going to set this to 556 pixels like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and save. So next we're going to style this a bit more. So let's come over here to our page settings by clicking this gear icon and then clicking the CSS tab. So this is where you enter your CSS code. If you'd like to follow along, this CSS code can be found on our blog post, which I've linked in the show notes below. Okay, so the next code we're going to add is going to customize the title text for the questions containing the radio buttons. So I'm just going to paste it in here. So you can see now that has changed. And then finally, we're going to add the last piece of code, which will give this some borders. So now that's looking much, much, much better. Okay, so let's go ahead now and save. We're going to save the page too. So before we finalize this tutorial, I'd like to make a few adjustments here on our full width header. So for the title here, instead of saying quote form, I'm just going to say discover what we can do for you like that. And I'm going to get rid of this subheading text. Next, we can see that um, our text here is not easily readable because of this bright background. So what we need to do to make to to change that is or to make uh, make it easier to read is to add a background overlay to this image. So we're going to come over here to design. In fact, I'm just going to search for it. So I'm just going to type overlay and then we can see it shows up here click on background overlay and just add this RGBA value. So it's a 0 .0 0.0.0.71. Okay, so once you enter it, now one thing you may notice is it's not updating here on the front end editor, but once you save everything, it will show. So I'm gonna come over here and save. And then I'm going to save the page. And then I'm gonna exit the Visual Builder. So now that we've exited the Visual Builder, you can see now that it's showing. Okay, so now let's test all our settings and see if everything is working fine. So if I come over here to this button here, this should anchor to our form. So if I click that, straight away it goes to the part where our form is. And with our conditional logic in place, if I select Web Production, you can see now the conditional logic is working. If I select App Development, you can see the options now here are changing. So that means our conditional logic is working according to what we've chosen. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release a brand new video. So until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.